So hello everyone again. Welcome to the fourth video concerning chapter three of the any percent tutorial of Bravely Default. We just reached Grandship. Um, about chapter three. Chapter three is really easy, um, except for the very last boss of the end of the chapter, which is a pain in the ass. I am not scared to say so, because that's the truth. Um, I, however, managed with the new route to make him uh, make the fight slightly safer and also faster, but it's still pretty luck dependent. So we'll see how this goes. When you reach Grandship, you'll be exactly here, just beneath the steps. Take the steps, go right, and in this small corner right here, you'll find a thousand gold. Then skip this cutscene. Right here, in front of the inn to the left, you'll find an X potion. Then head to the weapon shop. Buy four ice rods. If you don't have enough to get to buy the four ice rods, and I actually recommend to do it after or before, up to you, st sell all your weapons. You can now sell the, the, the thief knife, we don't need it anymore. And that's it. You can also sell the Kempogi and the, the thief gloves. And there you go. Just sell this. Do not sell the rest. We don't need it for now. Then equip the ice rods on everyone. And you can now put dual rod on ring a bell if you so choose to, but I don't recommend it. And as soon as you're done, talk to this little fellow right next to the shop. There are some cutscenes you will need to skip once again. Follow him to the pub that is just on the screen before and in the side. On the pub, take the stairs to the right and to the left of this little table here and you'll find a flame charm. Then go talk to our friend <sighs> again. There are several cutscenes you'll need to skip. And now you can return back to your boat. To access the boat from Grand Ship, you want to go to the right and head through this door. More cutscenes to skip. There will be actually a lot of cutscenes to skip for the following minutes. With no battles whatsoever. Keep going west from Grand Ship. And you will have another cutscene before heading to the docks. After skipping the next cutscenes taking place into the docks, go through the door, another cutscene, and you will find yourself on the world map. Start following the path, there's just one narrow path to follow, you can do it wrong. And a bit further, when you reach those gates, there will be, I think, seven cutscenes to skip. So here's one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, five. Once on the world map again, head through the grass to the desert and to the HQ in the middle of it. Skip the introduction and the following cutscene talking to the commander. And you can now exit the HQ to go to town. Uh, the next town you're going to is Archile, which is to the very west of this continent.
Let's keep the cutscenes. First thing you'll do is go to the magic shop and buy Reflect. Then go to the left of those stairs and in the barrels isn't it an elixir. Once you've picked that up, go in the mansion of the commander and skip the cutscenes. You will heal automatically during those cutscenes, so that will take care of your health and MP points. Right here. One final cutscene to skip after sleeping, and we're ready to go. We have to return back to the HQ to uh, be assigned to a mission. After you got the mission, this will open the gates that you previously saw in the desert. So just head back to the desert and to the right of the HQ to go through the gates. Your next destination is the Grab Dungeon. So this is the final dungeon that involves witches. First witch is immediately to the right and then towards the middle. Right here. Then backtrack and actually start going towards the door you just opened. to the left and up the stairs. On the bottom of the stairs you just came from is a chest with money and then the second switch you need to hit. Uh, you could actually follow to the main path here but we don't want that. Take the stairs that are on the upper left corner of the floor and there will be a second switch right here. As soon as you're done hitting the switch, go into your menu and use the teleport zone. That will warp you back to the beginning of the dungeon. Do not take the stairs up in the middle just yet. Go to the left and take the door that you previously opened and there will be a chest right here with a turbo ether. Now you may take the stairs in the middle to reach the first floor again. Once on the first floor, there will be one cuts and skip, and you'll have the choice between uh, stairs to the right and to the left. First take the right ones, there's a single chest in a small area right here. Then backtrack and take the left stairs. Another cutscene to skip. Go to the bottom left first to grab an accessory. Right here. And then backtrack all the way back to the stairs and now go to the right. There will be a cutscene to skip right here. And you now have to take an hidden tunnel. The hidden tunnel is to the right, and I insist that it's on the right of the stairs by coming from above the stairs. And there is the second elixir of the game, or well, at least the run. Now take those same stairs, and you will be back to the second floor. 
go to the left and hit the final switch. After hitting the switch, once again, use a TP stone. The stones are always to the bottom of your inventory, so it's actually very easy to go there. Just press up. So go back to the first floor and take the stairs then just to the south. You may want to save before this boss, even though they're not that hard, but still. Inspect the bookshelf and there will be the boss fights. So the boss fights is against three robots. All you need to do is to spam Fundara on all foes with all black mages. And with Ring a Bell you only need to brave once, use Gircha Blulu once, and the Zeus Wrath that we got from the Twilight Rooms. The boss will die whatever happens in one turn, all you want is not them using the rocket punch attack a single time each. Here I only got one rocket punch, which is perfect. I have absolutely no way to die at all. So just skip the cutscenes and go to the abilities and set... Oh, not yet. Okay, never mind. You don't have it. TP stone. Oh, it's not yet. It's uh, yeah. Um, there. Once you're outside, you'll want to go back to the HQ. This chapter is what I like to call the backtracking chapter because you go back and forth a lot. So go back to the HQ. And then exit. You now have to go to the Mithril Mines. The Mithril Mines uh, will involve 10 fights, and you want to manage the number of MP all of your characters have at the end of this segment. So, the first thing you'll want to do is whoever has the highest MP, and it's usually going to be Agnes, you're going to unequip the Hermes Sandals from Ring a Bell and give it to that person. Then just go inside, skip the cutscene, skip the second cutscene, and you'll be automatically into the fight. This is how you do the Mithril Mines fast. You brave twice with every Black Mage, you set one Thunder, then one Thunder, and then another Thunder. The reason why we do the Thunder first and then the Thunder is because he might die after the first Thunder and Fondara. The second Thunder is just there for safety and you want to default with uh, Ring of Bell. And then you can set Auto. This way you'll, you just use the least MP possible. And you'll want to be above either 90 or 120 MP with all of your characters. So for now, just head to the left, you'll find another fight. Skip the dialogue after every fight. Grab this chest, then backtrack to the first cross path and take the right one for another fight. Oh, that is really bad. I didn't expect him to be faster than me. Well, at least he killed the idea, so... Yes. Everyone has catch up to her now. So, Reviver, 
Use the Phoenix Down. If you have to revive people at this time, use re uh, use the Phoenix Downs. So heal whenever you actually take big damage to make sure that what happened to me doesn't happen to you. Then at the cross path, take the left path first and continue with those fights. Then take the left bottom path, grab the hearth drum, and then go to the bottom right. This will be the final fight of this floor. I'm able to do one final fight with Anius. Oh, I see. Thank you for telling me. I actually didn't know. So this is the final fight Anius will be doing. She has exactly just above 90... Yes. Uh, 80 MP. Sorry. So now you'll want to unequip the boots and give them to Tiz. And break the amulet back to Anius. Then take the right path for another fight. Grab the chest. It contains a um, turbo leafer. Then backtrack to the cross path and take the left fork and go down for the fight and then you'll go up for the chest. So same thing, Tiz has just reached under 120 MP, which means I can still do it once with him, and then I'll have to switch to Adelia. Go, equip, giving the Mithril Bangle back and the RMS Sandals to the uh, Then take the left fork right here for the final fight. Everyone levels up except Ringabell, which is unfortunate, but Black Mage's leveling up is actually way more important than the White Mage. As soon as you're done, use Teleport Stone to get out of here. And you're done with the mines. We are now going to fight Quota. Quota is a very annoying boss. As uh, he has a fixed pattern, but the attacks that he uses with his, within his terms of the pattern are random. And basically, what you want him to not do is to use the toxic high potion a lot. As you're about to reach this stack for dungeon, go into your menu and unequip every armor and every headgear on every character and put the well you don't need to put anything back skip the cutscenes go to the right side of this road and you'll reach an old man 
which is an item seller. So select Armory and start selling. Sell the Glaive, sell the Mithril Rod, the 4 Cadier Hoods, the 4 Floral Robe, 2 Mithril Bangles, the Flame Charm, and the Rebuff Locket. The uh, Armor Sandals are here now for me because I unequipped it, it shouldn't be for you. Pay attention not selling the Armor Sandals. And then sell your 5 Turbo Ethers. Then go to buy, buy 4 Mage's Hat. And 4 Black Robes. And you should have just enough money to actually buy an extra amulet. And there you go. Now you'll want to equip everything, so go here, boom, optimum, optimum on everyone. Put the Hermes Sunnels back on Ring a Bell and the Amulet on Tiz. You're now ready, put abilities, equip the Angelic Ward, which is a 50% chance of actually reducing your damage by 50% go into your items and use one ether on whoever needs to be above 120. Then heal everyone to full life with ring a bell and you're ready to go. This is the most important shopping session of the game as you get items that basically will boost your damage by at least 2.5. Then, inside this dungeon, pick the chest on the bottom left and the one to the middle right. There's two set of stairs, one to the right, one to the left, after this cutscene. And you want to take the one to the right first. Once you're there, go down and take the right path. We're going to skip a lot more chests now, as there is very few things we need to buy from this point. And whatever we actually need to buy, the money from the bosses is actually enough. As soon as you find the little boy, use a TP stone to get back to the beginning of the dungeon, and this time take the stairs to the left. At the exact same location, but just on the opposite side. Then, go all the way down and you'll find a chest to the left with a thousand gold. Save if you want to once again and get ready to face Quado. So, as I said, Quada has a fixed pattern. On the very first turn, he will most likely either default or use Water of Life. So, for now, just default. Okay, started with a high potion, which is really, really bad. But at least it doesn't poison me, so that's good. Then default again. Okay, Quota, you're really being a dick right now. Uh, this is the turn where you'll want to heal. So, I'm going to use uh, potions on whoever needs to be full health and I actually have to use raise then cura on Agnes and now this is the next turn on the fourth turn where he is, go where he is going to brave so you want to default and default again If you survive this fourth turn, you're going to use Fire Up with Idea as she's using Fire Rods, and Blizzara for every other character as they have Ice Rods. For Ring Bell, you can just heal everyone with Cura on everyone and add the Earth Drum. 
And you can ja you can just auto. You will die. The only chance of you dying on this fight is if he focuses Ring a Bell with uh, a toxic high potion. Because as Ring a Bell doesn't have the damage dispersion spell, he will die unless Angelic Ward procs. So there you go. Everyone back to full health again. And he didn't target Ring a Bell, so he's going to die. So just remember, the first three turns do not do anything, and the fourth turn, heal yourself back to full life, then on the fifth turn, default, survive the burst, and then kill him by double nuking him. And this is how you kill this bastard. After skimping this cutscene, once again, use a TP stone. And exit. As you're about to exit to the wall map, there will be another cutscene to skip. Where you'll see that Quota wasn't really dead, but is going to get killed anyway. Once on the wall map, Go into the menu and equip. Unequip the Hermes sandals on Ringabel and put them on Agnes. Also, uh, cure the poison if you need to. Actually, what I just said makes no sense because then we're going to be healed. Well, don't do the same mistake as I did. Do not heal your poison. You're going to be healed as you go back to Heart Child. So go back to our child, taking the shortest path right here. Go to the hen and sleep. After talking to the commander's wife, you will be just outside of town. Oh, I mean, outside of. And you'll have to go and reach um, Tiz, that is just to the left of those stairs. Uh, not Tiz, actually, it's uh, Eagle. And here, you'll sleep. After sleeping, oh, this is what I meant when I said going to the menu. You'll find yourself in the commander's mansion. To the left side of the door is a Gale Harrapin. Pick it up and go to the world map. Once on the world map, going to equip. Check that she does have the Hermes sandals, in case you didn't do it previously. And you're now ready to go. So the reason why we're, go we're giving Agnes the Hermes sandals is because there is one mandatory fight as we're going to reach the Mirfell Mines. And also, at the bottom of the Mirfell Mines is the Fire Temple, and we, we are going to farm. Uh, before reaching the temple, and that will be using Agnes. So just default with everyone, press B twice to cancel to go back to Agnes, and use Thunder of four times, and then just launch the turn. Then access the mind. There will be no fights this time inside. So just keep any cutscene that is thrown at you and start making your way to the bottom.
this time take the left path that is slightly shorter to go to the door there will be more cutscenes with Aegil opening the door and you will now access the underflow the underflow is a very easy place to get lost so please play please pay attention to where I'm going and try and just remembering the paths so first you want to go all the way to the left no chest to pick up there's no chest at all to pick in this section actually I used to take some chests but now I don't keep following the path and go to the very top and then go left and you'll find the first set of stairs then on the next floor go towards the middle right here as soon as you're in the middle, take the path going down, and then you'll find the stairs. There's one cutscene of the stairs. So skip it and take the stairs. On the third floor, first go up to reach the cross paths and go left and then down. Then keep going to the left. There will be one cutscene here. Skip it. And then go right to the top left to find the stairs. And this next floor will be the final one. It's a little tricky in my notes, so watch the video. Go left all the way to the left then you are forced to go down and then go right and then go left and you'll find the stairs just in this corner so congratulations you're done with the underflow and this is the screen where we're going to farm there's three cutscenes to skip first however so skip them one two and three so you have taken a lot of damage going down by stepping on the lava so first thing you're going to do is to put everyone back to full health with ringa bell go into tactics put the game counter raid back to max and start grinding the fight you want is a fight with six red flags there's two other fights that you might possibly get but they're okay do two blizzaras and two blizzards with all of your black mages and default with ring of bell now just press the auto and this will do the trick. If you're faster, they will just die instantly. Uh, you want to farm until Ringabel reaches level 9 White Mage. If you're lucky enough to get um, the Red Flans fight, it should take only 3 fights with those guys to actually be level 9 with them. If you're not lucky, well, one red flan is equal to three of any other fights, so just keep grinding. Oh, you didn't die. Whenever you find yourself low in MP with Agnes, use an elixir. She can actually do it twice, I think. I'm still not getting the plans, which is unfortunate, but well, this is just for a tutorial. It will still be nice to me, for me actually showing you what the fight is like. Nope, still doesn't want to give it to me.
So now I've run out of MP, so just use an elixir. And start grinding again. Am I really not going to get any flames? Oh, here they are. So this is the fight you want. They give a shitload of experience. And there you go. Uh, he just reached level 9 white mage. So go to job, switch him to black mage, go to ability, and put secondary command as white magic. Then check your support abilities, but they should be fine. And you don't have to change anything else. Now do one more fight so that Ring of Bell gets some levels on his uh, Black Mage, which will allow him to have higher stats. There you go. So now turn the battles off, put everyone back to full health. And unequip the sandals, put the amulet, and give it back to the friend Ringable. You're now ready to go and face the boss. So end inside the fire temple. Uh, there is only one chest that we need. So it's just next to the save point. So go up, then take the left side here and hug the wall to the left, and you'll find the end tunnel. And at the end of it, an elixir. So the next fight is Shogmore. Shogmore is a very difficult boss on your first playthroughs. Uh, do not hesitate to save here, because if you don't save, the automatic load will put you at the beginning of the temple, so you have to walk to the door every time, so it can be really annoying. Uh, yeah, Chugmore is a really, really hard boss to kill the first time you play the game because he's scripted and his uh, physical attacks are actually very, very damaging. But since he has a fixed pattern, he's actually very easy to kill in a speedrun. Especially concerning the fact that we just got Reflect available with Ring of So, this is how the fight goes with Chugmore. First, you're going to default, then default again, and then default again. Now, you're going to fully brave and use Thundera on all of your allies. It's very important that you actually target all of your party, and you're going to do so with all of your black mages. This is what it looks like at full speed. And then, with Ring a Bell, you're going to use Reflect on all your party. You have to do it single target. And then, since Ring a Bell is faster, it will be faster than the boss transforming and taking his barrier off, and then everyone will burst the shit out of them. And there you go. Very easy fight. Press Auto, by the way. Because the next boss we're going to kill, we're going to kill the exact same way by just pressing auto. So there you go. That was fairly easy. Third session of Mash X of the game. There we go. Then you can skip the cutscene and set the new abilities that Ringabel just learned. So go to abilities and put damage dispersion 
He doesn't have silence ability, uh, silence immunity yet, so take a bait water off. That will leave the slot open for silence immunity. Then, use the teleport stone. Walk out of the fire temple. Then, use a second teleport stone. Walk out of this room, uh, screen, rather, as well, again. You will have two cutscenes to skip. And use a third and final TP stone. And you'll exit the mines. So the first stone is to exit the temple, then second one is for the underflow, and the third one for the mines. Then, you'll now want to return to the, to the HQ. This is going to be the second part of boredom. A lot of backtracking to do. A lot of cutscenes to skip. No fights for at least 10 minutes. You have to stick and bear with it. Once you've went to the HQ, uh, you have to leave Eagle to the commander's wife. So go back to our child. Skip this cutscene and add Tower's Dimension. And once you've done that, your main quest marker would be at Grand Ship. So you have to return by foot all the way back to the docks of this continent to find your boat. So I'll just walk there. Back at the docks, there will be a cutscene that triggers the pirate subquest. And the pirate is actually the next boss we're going to kill. So head to your boat, set sail, and go to Grand Ship. First, Go to the weapon shop at Grand Ship because there is two more ice rods that we need since Dia is still using fire rods. So buy those, you should have enough money without selling anything. Equip them right away. There we go. And now go towards the pub. There will be an NPC sitting on the left side of the pub and you have to talk to him skipping four texts and that will trigger the rest of this main scenario. There you go. Now go back to your boat and we're going to set sail towards Kadisla and on the way to Kadisla we're going to fight the pirate. So go north, straight, and you will find yourself near this foggy area. Go to the center of it and press A. Then, you cannot skip this. Carefully go through the text and select board. That is the second option. By default, you will be on let it pass, so just make sure you hit board. Once you're on board, take the right stairs and fight Barbarossa. As I said, Barbarossa, all you have to do is to press Y to go on auto, and it will be there. It's a very easy boss to kill. Yeah, 
There you go. You've just reached level 32. This is exactly what you want. You want to level up on this fight. Level 32 is the maximum level you can get before fighting the Behemoth, which is the next boss you'll be seeing and fighting. So getting the highest level possible for the Behemoth is optimal. Once you're done, just go back to your boat and get out of here. Continue north to Kadesla. You can now go through the fog, as long as you don't press A, you want to access the ghost ship. So, in Gadesla, just go to the inn. And once you're done with the cutscenes, actually sleep at the end, so you're full HP and MP. Now, what you want to do is to set your abilities and put the silence and nudity that Ringabel just got from the pirate fight, and get out of here. You're now going to backtrack some more. You've just learned that the innkeeper of Kadisla is very sick and that he needs assistance. So you're going to go back to Hardchild, except you're not going through the docks. You're going to go to the left of this continent and actually go around um, the fire continent from above as there is a beach just underneath Hardchild that you can land on. And that is actually way faster than just going to the docks and then by foot. As the speed that you travel by boat is slightly faster than the one when you're walking. So just really go here, keep following the continent. And once you reach Archile, you'll see the beach right here. So land and go to Archile. Once inside, go and speak with the commander's wife. There's only one cutscene to skip, and you will have Eagle with you. Step out of the mansion and return to your boat all the way back to Kalisla. Once you're back at Kadisla, all you have to do is to go see the king to fully approve of Eagle being a citizen of Kadisla. He will also become a knight, well, an apprentice at least. So skip the first cutscene and you will be automatically warped to the inn. So skip the next cutscenes as well. And now just exit Kaldisla. We're now going to do one final trip. A round trip between Grand Ship and Kaldisla. So go to Grand Ship.
there you will have several cutscenes, one here and then at least four of them once you reach the pub. After these cutscenes, you will want to go to a new area that has just opened, which is the deck of Grandship. So skip those cutscenes, one, two, three, and I think there's no more, here you go. So the deck is on the same screen as the item and hint shops, but to the top of it. So keep going up the stairs and you'll reach the deck. Once at the deck, more cutscenes, skip it, there will be a second one, and then you can start pressing down to exit. You now just uh, notice that you need a piece of Auric Halcon, or whatever the name is in English, and the Eagle just so happened to find one at the mines, so this is why we have to return all the way back to Kavisla to get the piece of ore, and then return to the deck with it. So simply step inside the inn, there's one cutscene to skip, and then you can exit the game. Now go back to the deck, and you will have access to the new dungeon, final dungeon of this chapter which is the Yangine room. And this is where the best boss in the game is located at. So go back to the deck, inspect the door, skip the cutscene, and then inspect the door again to enter the dungeon. So once inside the engine room, there's two switches, but switches to open an elevator that are located somewhere inside this dungeon. First you'll want to reach the bottom right stairs and take them. And please now pay attention to the stairs I'm actually going to take, as you can get lost quite easily here. Then go to the top right, take those stairs again. Then go all the way to the left, keep going left, then up, follow the path down, and as soon as you can go right, and then seg it down, and then right again, and you'll find those stairs. They're really hard to find. The rest is very easy, but this is the only narrow path that you actually have to find. Then follow the stairs and hit the switch. Once you've hit the switch, as always, use a TP stone. We don't want to actually go all the way back by foot. Now take the exact same path Instead of taking the bottom right stairs, we're going to take the bottom left stairs. And on the way to the left, you will find the chest with a thousand gold inside, right here. Now take the stairs. As soon as you're on the next floor, immediately go up to the left side, and on the top left corner, is in a hidden chest with another gold hourglass. The gold hourglass, if you remember for the from the second video, is an item we picked up near Profiture. Then go to the bottom right where you just picked the chest to find the stairs. And the final switch. Now use the second and the final TP stone.
and you may now go and proceed through the elevator. This is the floor where the hidden tunnel is first dungeon. It is located on the middle of the very bottom of this map, right here, and you can go left and you will find a Megalix uh, Megalixer. So Megalixer will be used in three fights. There's only two Megalixers we get in the run, and I'll explain it where. So first of all, save. Whatever you do, save here. You will most likely die on the first uh, tries. And even I save here because it takes too long to go from the elevator to here. So here is the fish, the behemoth. He is the first fight where we may use the elixir, the second being, uh, uh, how is he called? Uh, well, whatever, we don't care about that. So for the first turn, we're going to use a single Thundera on Ibiya with every character, so just one thunder with the Onidia uh, with all black mages and with Ring a Bell we're going to reflect Idea. So just now he roared. Roared Roar, sorry, is his most powerful attack. And the reason why we might use the elixir on him is because of Roar. Only if he does it on the first turn like he just did though. So now for the second turn, we go full brave and use Fandara on all your party this time, with all four black all three black mages. And then we full brave, use the Megalixer, and then use Reflect on Tiz, Agnes, and Ring a Bell. So now, even if he roars again, I will not die because I'm full HP. And he... there, he bites. And after those thunderers, he's going to die. And there you go. So I'm actually going to reset on purpose, because I used the Mega Elixir. And I actually want to save the Mega Elixir for later, so that I actually might have to show the different uh, possible outcomes of the fight, depending on how you use the Elixir or not on this fight. So I'm actually going to try and save it. So let's do the fight again. Once again, Thunder on Idea with everyone and Reflect on D. So just right here, he didn't he didn't roar, which is good. So boom, Thunder. And now with Ring a Bell, you have the option to either use uh, potions or you could just cure yourself. The only um, the only reason you'd use a potion is if Dia was targeted. Since she has Reflect on her, you don't want to use magic, so you'll use potions. So for now, it was Ring a Bell, so I can just cast Cura and then Reflect on Tiz, Agnes, and Ring a Bell. Now all I want is to not die from Roar if he does use it and if my HP is not enough. But as you can see right now, I'm very lucky and I survived everyone with less than 100 HP. So now I'm just going to just kill him, no problem, 
and that was a very good play. So I just showed you two different ways involving or not the Omega Elixir and actually surviving a roar. So that's very good for a tutorial video showing you that it is indeed possible. Next, you will want to skip all those cutscenes that will lead you to acquiring a brand new airship. Once you have the airship, press B to skip the tutorial. Now, go onto your touchscreen and open the menu and press the airship button and use autopilot. Yes, a lot of people don't know that this ship actually has an autopilot. Then go to Florum. And go and buy two more fire rods. Then you'll want to fully heal everyone with ring a bell and then give them fire rods and there you go there should be no new abilities to set on anyone now you may continue with the rest of the game so touch the ship button to call it then autopilot once again and go to Ison and then stack fort that is on the very bottom so you can just press up and then from stack fort just go north that is the fastest way to actually go to your next destination then you will reach the next continent you will have Two cutscenes to skip, then press A to land, and one final cutscene to reach chapter 4. So there you go, chapter 3 is done. Quite scary because of the behemoth, because you can do a pretty much godlike chapter 2 and then reach behemoth and he will wreck your face, killing your run. But overall, I think that chapter 3 is just really long because of the backtracking, but with practice it will be very easy for you. Just train behemoth. With that said and done, we are now going to do chapter 4 right after I'm uh, done with my break. So this is it for me for this video, please look forward for the next one, and uh, as always if you have questions, do not hesitate to hit me on Twitch or on the comments. So see you in a few or next part.